Hey everybody, in this video we are going to set up a client class like how we set up the server class in the last video. However, before we do that, there's just a couple of changes I'd like to make. Uh, I noticed that I had put the network initialize inside of the server class and I have the network shut down outside and I have that same concept in the existing client class. However, I'd prefer that the network initialize is actually done outside of the server class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to be like so, where the network is initialized, and if it's successfully initialized, we do all this, and then we shut it down. Inside of the server initialize, I'm going to take out where we were initializing the network and printing out that message. Another thing I wanted to change was inside of our my server header, these are functions that are being overridden. However, I didn't specify override. And I'd like to go ahead and just add that there. It still works just fine, but when you have a function that's being overridden, it's better if you just specify that it's an override. Now let's get started on our new client class. So I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to call this client.h and add a cpp file, call it client.cpp. Inside of our include me, I'm going to add an include for this client header. Oh, and one other thing that I forgot to do was inside of the server header, I forgot to wrap this around the pnet namespace. I'm going to do the same thing in the server CPP. Now let's look at our existing client header and copy what we have here. We'll just cut that out and then go into our new client header. We'll paste this here. We're going to include TCP connection. Now things are going to be a bit different this time. We're not going to have a socket object. We're going to have a connection object and we're going to have that as protected. For process packet, it is going to be a virtual function so we can override it. And it is also going to take in a shared pointer. There are also a few other functions that we'll be adding. We're going to have overridable functions for when we successfully connect, when a connection fails, as well as when we disconnect. On top of that, we will also need a master in a use file descriptor. And this all will be wrapped in the pnet namespace. Let's go to our existing client CPP and copy what we have here. And we can go ahead and delete our client CPP file as well as our client header that we had before. Now if we go to our new client header, let's go ahead and generate the definitions for all of these functions. And I'm going to wrap this in the pnet namespace. First, let's take a look at our connect function. So I'm going to paste what we had before, and then we're going to be making some changes to this. So first I need to include iostream. I specified at the beginning of this video that I don't want to be initializing the network in our client and server classes. I feel like that should be done outside of them. So I'm going to take that out and take out the line where we print that it was successfully initialized and then take out the right brace for that. Next, we're going to need to declare a temporary socket object for setting up our socket for our connection. When we get down to here, if we successfully connect, before we do anything, we'll want to attempt to set the socket to non-blocking. We set it to blocking for when we connect for now, and later we'll probably change that to use a non-blocking connection method, but that's a little bit more involved. So for right now, we're just going to use a blocking connect, and then after we connect, we'll switch the socket to non-blocking. So the way we'll do that is we'll call uh, set blocking, we'll pass in false, because we want to set it to non-blocking, and if that's successful, then at this point, we will determine that we have successfully connected. We are not going to print out if we successfully connect, we're just going to call on connect, and then we can choose whether we want you know that to print out that we successfully connected or not. 
Some other things we'll have to do now is since we have a connection object, we will have to assign that. And for the arguments here, we will be passing in the socket that was created, and then we will be passing in the IP endpoint that was passed into the connect function. Next, we will have to set up our master file descriptor. So for this, the file descriptor will just be the connections handle. For the events, we want to check for being able to write normal data without blocking and being able to read normal data without blocking. And then the R events will of course be zero. Because if we remember, the poll function will populate the R events. Next, let's go down. If we fail to connect, we're not going to print out a message. What we're going to do is just at the end, before we return false, we will call on connect fail. Now our new connect function is set up just how we need it. Next, let's look at the is connected. We will just return the value of is connected. For our frame function, we are going to look at the server frame function. So let's go to the server CPP and go all the way to the top. And we're going to copy this frame function. And of course, we'll make some changes because this is a client, this is not a server. So on the client, let's paste this. And let's start at the top and work our way down. First, when we call poll, we are just going to be polling one file descriptor. So we don't need to call data to get the array. We can just pass in the address of our use FD. For the size, it's just going to be one because we just have one connection for the client. For the listener code, we don't need listener code because we're not listening for connections since this isn't the server. We'll take that out. For our for loop where we're going through all of our different file descriptors, we don't need a for loop because there's only one file descriptor. So I can take out the for loop. Let's get rid of the right brace for that. Then go back up. For connection index and for the reference to the connection, neither of these are necessary because we won't have a connection index. There's only one connection and we don't need a reference to connection, we can just use the connection object inside of our client class, which is also called connection. For use FD at subscript I, we can do a replace for this and just replace it with use FD because there's only one file descriptor. Make sure you have current document selected so you're not affecting any other files. And we'll go ahead and do a replace all there. For closed connection, in the previous closed connection for the server, we had a connection index for whichever connection was being closed. However, for this, we only have one connection, so we're not going to have that argument. We'll just replace this with closed connection without that argument. And on that note, I haven't put the closed connection in, so let's go ahead and do that. Go to the client header, and we are just going to add a protected function called closed connection that takes in a reason. And let's go ahead and generate that definition. Let's go back to the frame function. And instead of continuing, what we're going to do is we're going to return false. And it's going to be like that with all of these continues where an issue happened with the connection. Now, when we get towards the end of the frame function, we were iterating through all of the connections and checking if they had incoming pending packets but we only have one connection, so we don't need that for loop. And instead of using connections at I, we can just use connection. Last thing we need to do here is change it from passing in that I uh, index to not passing it for closed connection. And instead of breaking right here, we will return false if we fail to process a packet. Let's take a look at the next thing, which is this process packet. Our process packet is going to be just like the servers by default, where we just print out that we received a packet with size and we put the size. For on connect, we are going to print out successfully connected. For on connect fail, we're going to print out that we failed to connect. For on disconnect, we will print out that we lost connection and we will put the reason that we lost connection. For closed connection, we are first going to call on disconnect and pass in the reason. Then we're going to reassign the master file descriptors file descriptor handle, which I guess this isn't really important. Um, 
But then we're going to set is connected to false, and then we are going to call close on our connection object. Now that this is all set up, let's go ahead and test it out. We need to create a new class to inherit from this. We're going to call it my client. We also need to create a new CPP file. We will call that my client. Now inside of our my client header, we're going to include our include me. Back inside of our client header, I'm just going to copy all of the overridable functions and put that in my new class. And I'll specify that these are overrides. For this video, I'm not going to mess with overriding on connect fail and on disconnect, but I am going to override process packet and on connect. So let's generate these definitions. Go into here. For process packet, it's going to be exactly the same as what we had before. The only difference is it's taking in a shared pointer to a packet. For on connect, what we're going to do is we are actually going to create a packet to send to the server that says hello from the client. And then I guess we could also print out that we successfully connected. So we just create that packet, uh, packet type chat message. We append the string to it, and then we append that packet to our outgoing packet manager for that connection. Let's go to our source CPP and update this accordingly. So we're going to be using the my client header now, and we're going to be using the my client object. I can take out that using namespace, and we also need to call the network initialize. Now you may notice that we have an error here where it says it cannot call the default constructor of my client. The reason it's saying this is because inside of client, we have a TCP connection object, and TCP connection object does not have a default constructor. So we're going to set one up right here. And inside of this, we are just going to call the default constructor for the socket object, and that'll just give it an invalid socket handle until we initialize it in the connect function. Let's go ahead and test this. So I'm going to run the server. And now I'm going to run the client. All right, and we see the chat message, hello from the client, from where the client connected. And then we see the chat message, welcome, which came from the server to the client. So now both our server and our client are able to send and receive messages to each other. That's all that we're going to cover in this video. In the next video, we might look at some optimization techniques. Specifically, when we are processing the packets, we are processing the packet size and contents separately, and we have to call send twice per packet at a minimum and receive twice per packet at a minimum. And it's actually possible for us to cut down on this. So we'll probably look at that uh, just to cut down on our calls to send and receive. But yeah, that's all that we're going to cover for this video, and thanks for watching.